Thank you for attending this online workshop. I want to get straight to the point and tell you what's going to happen today. I'm going to talk about two main things. Firstly, I'm going to teach you my IELTS essay template formula to acing your IELTS writing test, which has helped over 450 of my students pass their IELTS and IELTS writing. I'm going to teach you the step-by-step -step process to creating a great level three IELTS essay template at home for yourselves. This is something I've never reviewed ever before because this is one of my secret weapons to so many of my students passing their IELTS exam. But I'm going to review to you this process today. Now, you definitely want to stay for the whole two hours plus as you'll be learning a lot. As you can see, these are what some students have said after attending this essay template formula workshop. At the end of this process, you're going to be able to create something like this. This is part of the handouts you're going to leave this workshop with. This is a template with model answers for one particular and common IELTS essay question type. Through this workshop, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process to creating this. And when you leave this workshop, you'll be able to know how to create level three essay templates for other IELTS essay question types. So stay to the end, and you're going to be receiving not just these templates, but also these valuable handouts, over 80 pages of them. Now, that's the first thing I'm going to talk about today. The second thing I'm going to do is talk more about my online IELTS classes for those of you who are interested to find out more. I used to teach face-to-face -face classes for 10 years until 2022, as you can see here. These are some of the pictures. However, now I've moved my teaching online and I only teach online. I'm going to tell you more about my online IELTS classes in the second half of this workshop. I'm going to go through all this information later on. And in this workshop, you'll be able to understand what my teaching is like and how detailed I get in my teaching. And you can decide for yourself if my online IELTS class is suitable for you. But whatever reason you came for this online workshop, whether you came for the first reason, that is to learn the essay template formula, or whether you came for the second reason, that is to find out more about my online IELTS classes, or if you came for both reasons, whatever the reason, stay to the end, and all of you will leave with 80 plus pages of valuable information, impactful materials, and detailed essay templates that will help you improve your IELTS level. I'll talk a bit more about my IELTS classes at the end of this online workshop, but for now, I'm going to review to you step-by-step -step how to create a great level three IELTS essay template. So in a bit more detail, this is what you're going to learn. You'll learn how my students have improved their writing by 0.5 up to 2.0 within a short period of time. The three levels of the IELTS essay template formula the differences in effectiveness between level one and level three. You learn how to create your own IELTS essay templates using my essay template formula. You take home a detailed level three IELTS essay template for one of the most common IELTS essay types. And of course, at the end, you learn more about my online IELTS preparation classes. Now, throughout this workshop, I'm also going to share with you these 12 pieces of information. The number of hours needed to improve by one IELTS band according to IELTS. Hardly anyone mentions this because you have to go to nearly 20 years ago to find this piece of information. Also, how this number of hours can be reduced by working smart. Number two, how allowing students the freedom to be creative, to take risks and to think for themselves is not the best or most effective way to score well in a high stakes exam like IELTS. Number three, why a teacher showing you what to write in your IELTS writing is better than telling you how to write in your IELTS writing. Number four, why one size fits all essay templates don't help much. Number five, why you shouldn't trust most IELTS websites online, especially the IELTS writing questions and model essay answers. I'll also show you examples of what I mean. Number six, 
Two reasons why most IELTS students fail their IELTS exam and IELTS writing repeatedly. The second reason, which I call CUU, will change the way you think about the knowledge you have for the IELTS exam and also for life in general. Number seven, the number one deadly sin of IELTS preparation. This deadly sin relates to the wrong way students prepare for the IELTS exam. This is actually the preparation method of choice for probably 80% of IELTS students and one of the major reasons why most students fail their IELTS exam. Number eight, the story behind how my ex-student Sohain, now living in Canada, prepared for the exam by himself and got 6.5 and what changed in his preparation methods after attending my IELTS classes, which allowed him to jump two band score from 6.5 to 8.5. Number nine, which criteria in the writing band descriptors is the most difficult for students? Probably 80 to 90% of students are weak in this area and this prevents a lot of students from getting 7.0 in their writing. Number 10, why the time gap between your IELTS preparation class and your IELTS exam needs to be bigger and not smaller? Number 11, why many people get excited about immigrating to another country but eventually give up their immigration dreams? And lastly, number 12, how one study mindset and study routine are two of the most underestimated factors in the success of IELTS students. Now, these 12 points I'm going to touch on throughout this workshop are there for a reason. All these 12 points relate to the most commonly asked questions students have asked me and answers I've provided about IELTS preparation throughout my 10 years of IELTS teaching experience. Trust me, the answers to these 12 points contain a lot of useful information that you won't find elsewhere that could help you prepare properly for the IELTS exam. Oh, if you miss any of the answers in the handouts you'll be receiving at the end of this workshop, these 12 points will be listed with answers and explanations from me. Let me start by talking about my IELTS writing teaching journey. So I've been teaching IELTS for over 10 years and mostly specializing in IELTS. In my early years of teaching IELTS, I taught mainly one-to-one -one private tuition. I learned how to teach IELTS through going through almost every IELTS course book and textbook and course available. Many students came to me especially for writing because writing is the most difficult component in IELTS. And most people came to me to work on the writing task to essay. What I used to teach them was what I learned from other IELTS course books and teachers. Let me give you an example of how many teachers and many good IELTS course books teach essay writing and the way I used to teach it before. Here's some content taken from a very good IELTS textbook. So basically they tell you that an essay consists of three parts, an introduction paragraph, body paragraphs, and a conclusion paragraph. And they also tell you what's involved in each type of paragraph. So as you can see here for an introduction paragraph, First, you paraphrase the ideas in your own words, and then maybe you state your position clearly. Then you have body paragraphs. You start with topic sentences, which express the main idea of the paragraph, then continue with supporting ideas. Then for your conclusion paragraph, you summarize what was mentioned in the body paragraphs, and then you state your position again. Okay, so that's good information. I taught students all that, but I still saw many students failing to get their target score after coming to my classes. Most of them needed 7.0, but many will be stuck at 6.5 or 6.0. So it was about this time when I saw many of my students constantly failing their IELTS writing that I discovered two important things. Firstly, I started studying the writing band descriptors, which explain what IELTS writing examiners were looking out for. As I started to study these four criteria, I realized that I needed to find ways to help students improve in all the criteria, in all four areas. You see, students need to know not just how to structure and organize their essay, but also how to do well in vocabulary, grammar, and 
cohesion. I started to realize that one of the biggest reasons many students don't get their target writing score, especially for those who are stuck at 6.5, is that they make too many grammatical and vocabulary mistakes. The second thing I discovered is something that very few people, IELTS teachers included, actually know, even till this day. This revelation is knowing how many hours it would take generally for students to improve by one IELTS band. I was looking for this piece of information and it was difficult to find, but one day I stumbled upon the answer. Does anyone want to guess how many hours you think it takes for students to improve by one IELTS band? Well, the 2002 IELTS handbook actually gives the answer. Yes, 2002 not in the handbook these days. It says that students could take up to 200 hours of study to improve by one IELTS band. Recently, I've been told by people in IELTS that this figure is probably closer to 400 or 500 hours. Now, if we take these figures, that works out to be about 50 to 125 hours of study to improve by just one band for the IELTS writing. That's a lot of time. That's seriously a lot of time. Now with these two revelations, I started to realize why students kept failing their IELTS writing and found it very difficult to improve their score. Firstly, typical IELTS writing materials just tell you how to organize and structure an essay, but that's not good enough. In order to do well in your writing, you must not just do well in these areas, but also in these areas. The examiner is also looking at the student's grammar and vocabulary and cohesion. And guess what? Both grammar and vocabulary are difficult to improve. Secondly, add to this the fact that statistics say that it takes such a long time to improve by one IELTS band. Most of my students, especially the working adults, don't have so much time to improve. Once I started to realize these two things, I told myself that there must be a better way to help my students, a better way to make sure they can improve in all four criteria in as little time as possible as their working adults. So began my journey. So I went on a journey to find a way that will help my students improve dramatically in their writing in a short period of time because I know, realistically speaking, most students won't be putting in much time in their IELTS preparation. I looked at all the books related to IELTS and essay writing in general. I learned some stuff and got some ideas, but what I found was never good enough to really help improve my students' essay writing score in any dramatic fashion. It took me almost a year of trying to figure out a solution for this problem and eventually I decided to make my own solution as I couldn't find a solution out there that worked. And this solution is my essay template formula, something I've been improving for the past 10 years. This method will help students dramatically improve their IELTS writing score in a short period of time and in a way that's unlike anything you can find out there. Now, before I continue, and before I teach you this essay template formula, let me tell you a bit more about myself so you know that you can trust what I'm going to say. So who am I? Firstly, I've been an IELTS specialist for 10 plus years. My focus for the last 10 plus years has been on helping IELTS students alone. That means I don't teach anything else. I don't take general English students. My school IELTS University is an official IDP Singapore IELTS partner. I've also taught for IDP Singapore. I've taught their master classes and writing classes. Because I spend almost all my time on IELTS, I'm able to create better and better IELTS materials. That's how I've managed to come up with the strategies I'm going to teach you today. In terms of academic qualifications, I have a CELTA from the University of Cambridge, which is the most prestigious English as a second language teaching qualification in the world. And I'm also pursuing a Master of Education in English Teaching. As a result of my focus on IELTS and on my IELTS teaching materials and classes, over 450 students 
have passed the exam after coming to my classes. All 450 of their testimonials, WhatsApp emails are on my website at www.iotsuniversity.com forward slash testimonials. Now, I actually do not follow up with each student who attend my class, so I know that there are many more who have passed the exam but have never informed me yet. The 450 number consists only of those students who have WhatsApp me and told me they have passed. The writing component of the IELTS exam is the most difficult component and many people have come to me over the years especially for writing because they failed their writing over and over again. Many of my 450 plus student testimonials are from students who have failed their IELTS writing over and over again and only passed after attending my IELTS classes. You can go to this web page shown here to see testimonials from such students www.iotsuniversity.com forward slash writing dash improvement. Let me share very quickly some testimonials from students who have benefited from the essay template formula that I'm going to teach you today. Mawandi filled 15 times. He always got 6.5 for his writing. Finally, he came to my class and he got 7.0 and passed his writing. Joyce filled her writing 7 to 8 times. She always got 6.0 or 6.5. Then she came to my IELTS classes, then passed her writing. She got 7.0. Buma had the same story. Failed 7 to 8 times and finally came to my IELTS classes and got her 7.0 and passed her IELTS. So, please pay attention today because I'm going to teach you exactly how you can improve your writing dramatically using the exact same method that has helped the birth students finally pass their IELTS writing after failing it so many times. Let's go back to the typical IELTS essay teaching by many teachers and course books. This is basically their teaching on how to write an essay. As you can see, they just give you an outline. They give you some general guidelines that don't get into specifics. The reason for this is that many course books are based on a very learner-centered, bottom-up teaching philosophy where they don't want to give you too many specific details or too much guidance as that may stifle your creativity. They want to encourage you to think for yourself, express yourself, be creative and go through trial and error to learn. As a result, they give you general ideas and guidance, but you need to implement it in your own way. Now, I understand such a philosophy of wanting you to think for yourself rather than spoon feeding you. I agree with that and I agree that we need to discover things ourselves as that's best for learning. But the problem is that IELTS is a high stakes exam and you want to do your best. You pay 350 plus Singapore dollars or US 250 plus dollars to take the exam and your immigration or further studies depend on your IELTS score. You're not here to improve your English primarily but to do well in your IELTS exam and pass it. So students have no time to think for themselves or go through the long process of discovery. Students want detailed guidance, not general pieces of advice. And students want to be shown exactly what to write, not told generally how to write. Let me ask you a question. If you want to play golf or cricket and you don't know how to hit a ball using a golf club or a cricket bat, which is the better way to learn and improve? Reading a book telling you how to do it? Or having someone showing you exactly what to do as the person wraps his or her arms around you and guides you through the correct motions of hitting the ball? Of course, the hands-on support that people give you when showing you how to hit the ball is going to be so much better than the theoretical advice on how to hit the ball. Showing is better than telling. You see, a lot of textbooks and schools will tell you how to write an essay like this. That's good information. But you can understand in theory how to write an essay, yet still not be able to write a good essay. If that is telling you how to write an essay, what is showing you exactly step by step what to write in an essay? Well, this is exactly what I created years ago something that would show you exactly step by step what to write in an essay something that could improve your writing score dramatically 
So I want to talk to you now about my essay template formula and how it can help you and how to create these templates. Firstly, let me talk about what a template is. A template is a model, a pattern, an example for you to copy or imitate or model after. Here's a definition of an essay template from a book on essay templates. There's a lot to this, but let's go through this step by step. Now, templates mean different things to different people. Through my years of study, I've come to realize that not all templates are the same. Some are simpler, some are more complex, some are better than others. IELTS essay templates have the ability to help you improve your writing dramatically, but how much it can help you depends on what type of templates you have, how detailed and good they are. That will determine the template's effectiveness and ability to help you improve your writing marks. To make it easier for you to understand the different aspects of a good template, I've color-coded different aspects of a template, and this relates to different levels of a template. I'm going to call them level 1, level 2, level 3. A level 1 template is the most basic and least effective template. A level 2 template is more complex and more effective. And a level 3 template is the most effective of them all. This is what we're striving to create. Search the internet for IELTS essay templates and you'll find a lot of them. But I can almost guarantee you that the kind of IELTS essay templates you find online cannot be compared to the level 3 IELTS essay template I'm going to show you. So let's go through template level 1 to level 3. A level 1 template provides the skeletal synthetic frameworks, organization, and structure. A level 2 template provides parts of sentences or paragraphs with blanks to fill in with words of your choice and the syntax is error-free. A level 3 template provides diction at a high level and grammar and vocabulary that elevate the level of writing. Now I'm going to teach you how to create all three levels of essay templates, so please take note of the difference. As you can see on the left, there's an icon to represent each level. For level 1, the icon is a skeleton because level 1 templates provide just the skeleton of the essay. For level 2, if you see closely enough, it's an icon of a piece of writing or essay with blanks. A level 2 template is like that. Parts of the essay are written and you need to fill in the blanks with your own words. For level 3, the icon is a makeup kit, a lipstick and a mirror. Makeup enhances a person's look. A level 3 template is an enhanced and much better version of a level 2 template because the grammar and vocabulary is at a higher level. Okay, now, before I explain more about the three different template levels, let's go back to the IELTS writing task to ban descriptors. The criteria are so important because they are the things that the examiners are looking for in your writing. As you can see in this slide, I've placed the writing criteria below the three template levels. Level 1 templates help with the task response and coherence criteria. Level 2 templates help with the grammatical accuracy criteria. Level 3 templates help with the grammatical range, which is about complexity and vocabulary lexical resources, vocabulary, and cohesion criteria. Take note that I'm not going to give a thorough explanation of all the four criteria and the descriptions below them. I get more in-depth into it in my IELTS classes. For now, you don't need to go so in-depth to benefit from using an essay template. Okay. So let me show you an example of each level of the template. Let's start with a level 1 essay template. At its most basic level, an essay template is a skeleton of an essay. Skeletons are bones that support the body. They provide the structure or framework for the body. So level 1 essay templates provide the structure and organization for your essay. It will help you ensure that you use an academic type essay structure that will also help you score in the task response and coherence criteria. So the benefits of using 
a level 1 essay template is that you know how to organize and structure your essay and you address the task response and coherence criteria. Now let's move up a level to level 2. A level 2 good essay template doesn't just provide the structure and framework of an essay, but it also provides you with pre-written language that you can use. And this pre-written language is free of any grammatical mistakes. This is very important. With a level 2 good essay template, you don't need to write the whole essay yourself as some words, phrases and sentences are already provided for you. So you just need to fill in the blanks. So the benefits of using a level 2 essay template is that you don't need to write the whole essay, you only need to fill in the blanks. And the parts, words, phrases and sentences provided for you are grammatically correct and will thus help you reduce the number of grammatical mistakes you make. Therefore, you'll be able to do well in the grammatical accuracy criteria. Now, let's move to level 3. A level 3 great essay template goes further than a level 2 good essay template in that it uses higher level pre-written language which helps you improve your writing score in other areas. In particular, the words and phrases given to you incorporate complex grammar structures which will also improve your grammar score. It will include high level, less common vocabulary and collocations that will improve your vocabulary score. And it will use strategically located cohesive devices that will improve your cohesion score. So the benefits of using a level 3 essay template is that it further improves your writing score in three particular areas in terms of grammar, in terms of complex structures, in terms of vocabulary, providing less common words and collocations, and in terms of cohesion. So let me recap what an essay template is. It's a framework of an essay that provides the organization structure and support for the essay, just like a skeleton provides a support structure and framework for the body. This will help you do well in your task response and coherence writing criteria. That's a level one basic essay template. The next level is a level two good essay template. Beyond providing a structure, such an essay template also consists of pre-written words, phrases, and sentences that you can use in different parts of the essay. So you need to use fewer words of your own. You just need to fill in the blanks for the rest of the essay. And if you do this correctly, if the words, phrases, and sentences in your template are prepared properly, there will be no grammatical mistakes and this will reduce the number of grammatical mistakes you make and help you improve your grammatical accuracy score. And last is the level 3 great essay template. More thought and reflection are put into making sure that the pre-written words, phrases, sentences in the template are going to help you improve your overall writing score and three other important writing areas. These phrases will help you improve in the writing criteria related to range of grammar, vocabulary, and cohesion. All in all, a great essay template will help you improve your score in all four criteria, task response, coherence, and cohesion, vocabulary, and grammar. But please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's going to get you a 9 or even an 8 or even a 7. This is not magic. Nothing is guaranteed. An essay template contains part of the essay, not the full essay. I'm not giving you a whole essay to memorize because that's impossible to do. No one knows what question will come up in your exam. So an essay template consists of only parts of the essay. But do not underestimate the power of using a great essay template and having parts of the essay written well for you even before you start writing. By writing a part of the essay using a great essay template, your score can dramatically improve. Before I teach you step by step how to create your own level 3 template, let me prove to you that this can actually help students dramatically improve their writing. Remember Mawandi, Buma, Joyce just now, the three students who failed 15 times, 8 times, and 7 to 8 times before attending my IELTS classes? All of them credited my essay templates for them finally passing their IELTS writing exam. 
Okay, so I've talked about the differences between the three levels of essay templates and the benefits of using a level three great IELTS essay template. And I've shown you the real life positive impact that my essay templates have had on the IELTS results of my students. So now we get to the more exciting part. Let me teach you how to create a level three great IELTS essay template that can help you dramatically improve your writing score. At the end of this process, you'll also be able to take home one level three great essay template that you can use for one very common IELTS essay question type. But before I go through the five steps, let me quickly pause here and let you know that I do have another workshop that may be of interest to you. It's a free four hour IELTS masterclass workshop and it addresses how to prepare for all four components of the IELTS exam, listening, reading, writing and speaking. It's four hours long and packed with tons of information, not just addressing listening, reading, writing, speaking, but also addressing the three components of proper IELTS preparation. Um, the two different approaches to IELTS preparation, uh, smart work versus hard work. Of course, you want to work smart, not just hard. I teach you how to work smart and how to apply what I call smart work strategies to preparing for the speaking and writing components. And there's 200 pages of handouts, including some very useful class materials that can help you prepare for the IELTS exam. Now it's currently free at the moment. If you're interested, after this workshop, you can go to www.ieltsuniversity.com forward slash masterclass. I'll also give you the link at the end of this workshop again. Just note that this current workshop you're on right now is focused on IELTS writing, but I teach all four components, not just writing, but also listening, reading, and speaking, all right? Uh, and this masterclass, this free masterclass, will address all four components of the IELTS exam. So back to the five steps to creating a level three great IELTS essay template. So these are the five steps, and I'm going to go through each one by one. Number one, recognize different IELTS essay question types. Step number two, choose one essay question type and write out the essay structure in detail. That's a level one essay template. Step number three, for the essay type, decide which parts can be pre-written and write them. That's a level two essay template. Step four, spend time improving these pre-written words, phrases, and sentences. That's level three. And step five, create alternative vocabulary. Let's go to step one. The first step is to recognize different IELTS essay question types so you can create a template for each question type. I've already shown you a template for the question. In some countries, the average weight of people is increasing and their levels of health and fitness are decreasing. What do you think are the causes of these problems and what measures could be taken to solve them? But what if you have a question like this? Some people argue that capital punishment is good for a country. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Can you use the same template for this question? Definitely not. It would not fit. It would not fit because there are different IELTS essay questions. So step one is to differentiate between the different IELTS essay question types. The reason why we re want to recognize the different IELTS essay question types is so that we can create a template for each question type. If you want to create an effective essay template, you need to create a specific and detailed one that will fit that particular question type. If you create a template that can fit all essay question types, the result is that it will not be of a high level as it will not be specific enough with enough high level vocabulary catered to that specific type of essay question. So the first step is to recognize the different IELTS essay question types so that you can create a template for each type. Now to help you with this first step, at the end of this online workshop, I will give you guys a list of 50 official questions so you can complete this first step.
Let's go to step two. Choose one essay question type and write out the essay structure in detail. The focus here is to make sure your structure is good and fulfills the task response and coherence criteria to make this template a level one basic essay template. So step two is where you need to think of the essay structure for this type of essay. Here's the essay question we're working with. Now, there's no one correct structure or one correct way to write an essay. I just doesn't tell you the way to write an essay in detail, because if they do so, everybody's going to write it in the same way. The truth is that there are many different ways to write an essay. If you want to know what guidelines they give you for your essay, we just went through them before, the band descriptors, the criteria. That's all the information they give you. That's why it's important to understand the band descriptors, because that's how the examiners are going to mark your writing. So anyway, here's a structure you can use for this type we're going to focus on today, the causes and solutions essay type. Do note that this structure is for this IELTS essay question type, not for all IELTS essay question types. As you can see, this is an academic essay. Whether you're doing academic or general training IELTS, your essay is expected to be organized like an academic essay. An essay contains an introductory paragraph, body paragraphs, and a concluding paragraph. For this type of essay, we're going to use four paragraphs. You can see here the template structure for causes and solutions IELTS essay. In the introduction paragraph, the first sentence would be to paraphrase the topic of the question. The second sentence would be to address what you're going to discuss in the essay, which is an essay about causes and solutions. In the Two body paragraphs, paragraphs two and three. You start with a topic sentence, which basically introduces what the paragraph is about. Then you write two main points with supporting sentences for each main point. Lastly, for the concluding paragraph, you summarize the main points and you could also end with a recommendation. So this level one template structure will help you with the organization of a causes and solutions IELTS essay. So you don't have to think about how to organize this type of essay anymore. But of course, what you need to do is for each question type you come up with in step one, you need to create a structure for that particular type of IELTS essay question. So this is a level one basic essay template. This structure and organization is given to you. You now know how to write an essay of this type. Following the structure for this type of IELTS essay question will ensure that you do well in your task response and coherence IELTS writing criteria. All this is useful, but if you want to improve your writing score even more, you need to create a good level two essay template and a great level three essay template. So let's do that right now. We're going to take this good structure and flesh it out even more by preparing and writing out good words, phrases, and sentences you can use that will help you improve your grammar, vocabulary, and cohesion. So at step three now, for this particular essay type we've chosen, decide which parts can be pre-written and write out good words, phrases, and sentences for these parts. The focus here is to make sure the pre-written language is grammatically correct to make this template a level two good essay template. So we're working on a causes and solutions essay type as you should know by now. In order to know which parts of the template can be pre-written, we need to know which parts of the essay can be used over and over again for any IELTS essay question of this same type. For this essay question we're addressing, this is how you write the first paragraph, the two sentences, in many nations around the world, declining health and a lack of fitness are becoming very common among people. There are a number of causes of this, but certain steps could be taken to solve these problems. Now let's take another essay question, but this question is of the same essay question type. That is, it's a causes and solutions essay type. The gap between the rich and the poor is increasing. What are the causes of this and what can be done to solve this problem? Okay, how would you write the first paragraph for this essay question? 
The first sentence will be a paraphrase of this sentence, the gap between the rich and the poor is increasing. But let me ask you something. Do you think you can use this as your second sentence? There are a number of causes of this, but certain steps could be taken to solve these problems. The answer is, of course, yes. So as you can see, as long as you encounter another question of the same question type, here we're focusing on causes and solutions, you can always use this as your second sentence of your first paragraph. So let me show you a full level two good essay template in two slides. In this first slide, we see paragraph one and two. Now let me try to explain what we see here. In the first big column on the left called structure, this is basically the level one essay template. In the second column, entitled phrases and templates. These are pre-written words, phrases, and sentences for this essay type, causes and solutions. This is basically the level two essay template for the causes and solutions question type. These are the phrases and words you can memorize and use over and over again as long as your essay is of the causes and solutions question type. In the final column, on the right is a model essay. The phrases highlighted in yellow are taken from the second column, which is the level two essay template. Here's a slide for paragraph three and four. I'll let you look at it for a while. And now in this slide, the level two essay templates explained in detail. This is a guide to the template. The numbers and the explanations correspond to the blue numbers in the essay template seen before. There are seven points and explanations. All this is provided in the handouts given to you. So I'm not going to go through all of this in detail. So after the workshop, go and study this essay template and the notes. Now, if you want to take out the pre-written content from the template and all the notes, this is pretty much what you get. The simpler version of with the pre-written grammatically correct language and blanks that you need to fill in and it addresses the task response, coherence and grammatical accuracy criteria. Can you see how this level two essay template is better than a level one essay template? Do you see how this goes beyond just telling you the organization of the essay to actually giving you words, phrases and sentences that you can memorize and use automatically as long as this is a causes and solutions essay type. Do you think this is helpful? Do you see why the icon to represent this level two essay type is a fill in the blanks writing? So that's a level two good essay template, but we can make this even better. We can improve the language used in the template to impress the examiner even more. So we come to step four, which is to spend time improving these pre-written words, phrases, and sentences. The focus here is to make sure the pre-written language improves in these three particular areas, grammar, grammar complexity, vocabulary, and cohesion. Our goal is to make this template a great level three essay template. Here's the level three essay template with the phrases and model essay for paragraph one and two for this particular essay type. And here's the template for paragraph three and four. The parts highlighted in green are the parts that differ from the level two template. These words, phrases, and sentences here contain better grammar complexity, vocabulary, and cohesion than those of the level two template. All this is carefully explain in great detail in the three page guide that comes along with this level three template. There are five major points in this guide where I go into detail as to why these level three phrases will score better than the level two phrases. I won't go through all five major points here, but let me just go through point number one in detail. This is a bit simpler, so you will understand what's going on. Uh, so this is taken from the first body paragraph. This is the topic sentence for this causes and solutions essay type. There are three main improvements over the level two essay template, and they address 
the three main areas we've been talking about for the level three essay template. The first is grammar complexity. As you can see, we're using a subordinating conjunction while, and this makes this sentence a complex sentence or structure. The second is cohesion. The use of certainly is a cohesive device to provide emphasis. And the third is vocabulary or collocations. Here we use the adjective plus noun collocation, major reason. So these three improvements in this level three essay template will make you score better. Let me repeat what I've said already. You don't have to understand everything I've written in the guide. I'm explaining it to you from the perspective of how an examiner will view the phrases based on the band descriptors. I explain these in greater detail in my IELTS classes, but for now, you just need to know that you can still use these phrases even though you don't understand everything. So remember that using this level three essay template and benefiting from it is not dependent on understanding everything about this template. However, when you get your handouts at the end of this workshop, all these slides will be there. So go through these templates and explanation guide in detail to understand better what I've shown you before. So this is an example of a great level three essay template. Using this template will help you improve your writing because what is given to you, the structure and language will help you score in all four criteria in the band descriptors. All right, we've created a great level three essay template that has addressed all four criteria. All this will dramatically improve your overall writing score. So what's next? So we've come to step five. In order to make these templates useful for many different students, we need to include variety in the words, phrases, and sentences in the template so people don't use all the same words and phrases. This isn't something you need to do, but I do for my class students. So the words and phrases they write won't be similar to what other students use. As you can see, from the third column, various alternatives to words and even phrases are given. The way to use these structures is choose one of the words, phrases in between the slashes. Having gone through the five steps to creating a level three IELTS essay template with alternative vocabulary, let's see how these templates can actually help students improve their writing. Let's take a look at a past year IELTS essay question. I'm going to show you parts of my students' essays in response to this question before I taught them my essay template formula and before they use my level three essay templates. First, let me show you how they wrote the second sentence of the first paragraph. So student one wrote their reasons on this matter and there will be certain ways to stop this. Student two wrote, I'm going I'm going to share some of the causes and things we can able to do to solve this problem. Student three wrote, there are many possible causes for this. However, the effective actions to be carried out to eliminate the problem. These sentences are pretty representative of how many students will write their second sentence for this essay question. Now here are the mistakes. I'm not going to take too much time to go through the mistakes in detail, but as you can see, for the first student, he used the wrong preposition, the wrong tense. He could have used a better word and he used overall low level vocabulary. For the second student, you see mistakes related to using two informal words, not using the article the, not using the modal verb can properly. For the third student, he had problems related to sentence structure, prepositions and punctuation. As you can see, students make a lot of mistakes. In just one sentence, so many mistakes were spotted. No wonder it's so difficult to get 7.0 in one's writing. If you make too many mistakes, you're not going to get 7.0. Now contrast all the mistakes made with what would happen if a student used a template. Now, if you use a template wrongly by trying to be smart at adapting the template, as some students do, they will still make mistakes. They really shouldn't. Okay, this is by adapting it, don't adapt it. But if you use the template correctly, you will get 100% error-free sentence with good collocations and a sentence that can be written very fast. Now let's quickly go through another student's response. 
This time, the writing is taken from the first part of the concluding paragraph, where the main causes and solutions are summarized. Here you can see the mistakes made by the student. These include mistakes related to subject-verb agreement, word class, passive voice, modal verbs, and countable and uncountable nouns. Let's see how the sentence would be so much better and free from any mistake if the template was used correctly. Here you see no grammatical mistakes and good complex structure, cohesion, vocabulary, etc. I hope you're starting to see the value of using great IELTS essay templates. Now, if you're wondering what these numbers from 1 to 12 are that are put in the circles beside many of these mistakes, I'll talk a bit about them later on. Okay, I've gone through with you the five-step process to creating your own level three great IELTS essay template. You've already gotten such a template for the causes and solutions IELTS essay type, and I've taught you how to create your own level three essay template for other IELTS essay types. As you study the materials I've given you to create your own level three essay template, I want to warn you about some mistakes that students make when preparing for the IELTS writing. Firstly, warning number one, avoid one-size-fits-all essay templates. One-size-fits-all templates are meant to be used for all essay question types. They are general enough to be used for all types of essays. The problem with this is that they aren't effective. They will not help you dramatically improve your writing score as they will only be at a level one effectiveness. You find a lot of what I call one-size-fits-all IELTS essay templates online. This is an example of a one-size-fits-all template. This is actually a very common template found online. I don't know who wrote this essay template initially, but I've seen many websites copy this template. Compare my level three IELTS essay template with this one-size-fits-all template. Do you see the great difference? The one-size-fits-all is a level one template that merely gives the organization and structure of the essay. That's good, but that's not good enough to dramatically improve your writing score. As you've already learned, a level two and a level three essay template gives you not just the structure, but also high level language. That is words that you can use that will help you score in the grammar, vocabulary, and cohesion criteria. There's no way a one size fits all level one essay template can give you good grammar, vocabulary, and cohesion because a one size fits all template is meant to be general enough to fit all essay types. As a result, it cannot provide specific high level words and phrases. While most one size fits all templates are at a level one, some one size fits all templates are at level two, but even those are too general to be of any great use. Because they are one size fits all, the vocabulary wouldn't be good enough because it's catered for every essay type. Remember, you want to be using a level three template because that gives you the best chance of improving your writing. If you follow the five steps I gave you just now and put in the hard work, you'll be able to create a level three that will improve your writing dramatically. Don't take the easy way out and use one size fits all templates. One size truly doesn't fit all if you're looking at improving your writing score dramatically. Warning number two, in order to complete step one of the five step process, you will need to first get a proper list of official IELTS essay questions in order to understand all the different possible IELTS essay question types. Only then can you create a level three template for each question type. One of the great mistakes students make is to go online to any IELTS website to find a list of IELTS essay questions. This can be a huge problem because probably 90% of IELTS websites you come across online are very bad websites with a lot of wrong information. Many of these websites are started only to make advertisement money. That's why there's a lot of horrible information there and a lot of essay questions which are not truly IELTS essay question types. So you need to be careful. Later on, I'll give you a source of 50 IELTS essay question types that are truly and officially IELTS essay question types. Just stay to the end of this workshop. Please don't trust 
any IELTS website because if you create a level three IELTS essay template based on an IELTS question type that doesn't exist, you're gonna waste a lot of your time. The final warning, as I mentioned, there are a lot of really bad IELTS websites on the internet and a lot of them will also provide you with so-called model essays aimed at band nine. Beware of them as a lot of these essays have horrible grammar mistakes that are definitely not at the band nine level. Most students wouldn't be able to realize this because if your level is at a band seven or six, then you will be impressed with any IELTS essay that's better than what you can write. But please don't be fooled as there's a lot of these essays that contain a lot of mistakes. For example, this is a website telling students that this essay is at a band nine, but look at all the underlying words, all of them are mistakes. There's no way this essay will get nine because you can hardly make any mistakes if you want a band nine score. And this is from another website. Look at the number of Facebook likes. Many people obviously think this is a good website with good IELTS essays, but that's totally wrong. Again, the underlying words have mistakes in them. There are just too many for this essay to score band nine. Let me quickly recap what I've taught you today so far. I've taught you the three levels of IELTS essay templates. I've also taught you the five step process to creating your own level three IELTS essay template with alternative vocabulary. The trick is to use great level three IELTS essay templates. That's the reason why so many of my students have been able to improve their writing dramatically. Only after attending my IELTS classes, the secret is that they started to use my level three great IELTS essay templates. So you will leave this workshop with one level three IELTS essay template for one of the IELTS essay question types, causes and solutions. Go back and study the template I've given you. Memorize this template and if this essay type comes up, use it. This essay type is a common type, so there's a good chance that it will come up, perhaps 20 plus percent chance it will come up in the IELTS exam. But that's only one question type. There are many others. There are at least seven different types of IELTS essay, seven or more different types depending on how you categorize the question types. Obviously, I can't give you the templates for all the types of essay questions as that's something I give to my students who have paid for my IELTS classes. But you can take what you've learned today and go back and create the templates for yourself. Later on, I'll be giving you a list of 50 plus official IELTS essay questions. Remember, step one is to recognize the different IELTS essay question types. For example, take this question. It is different from the causes and solutions type. It's another type. Then go through steps two to five. Go and create a level one, then level two, then level three essay template. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, first of all, that that's too much work. Going through the five steps, that's just too much work. I hear you, but let me just say that hard work pays off. You reap what you sow. Put in the hard work to create your level three essay templates for all question types, and it will show in your writing marks. There are some others, on the other hand, who may be thinking, do I have the grammar, vocabulary, etc. to create a great level three IELTS essay template? That's a good question. To create a great level three IELTS essay template, you need to have a thorough understanding of the band descriptors, extensive vocabulary and impeccable grammar. Ultimately, the effectiveness of your template is dependent on the level of your input and effort into creating it. Your improvement in your writing score is dependent on how good your understanding is of the band descriptors and what your level of grammar and vocabulary is. If your understanding of the band descriptors is good and your grammar and vocabulary are both good, then you will create a great level three template that can improve your writing score dramatically. On the other hand, if you start with a poor understanding of the writing criteria and your grammar and vocabulary is not so good, so you can't create good pre-written phrases, 
then your essay template will not be that effective. If that's your concern, then you may be interested in my IELTS classes, where I give you all the writing templates as part of your writing classes. So for those of you who don't want to go through the process of creating your own level 3 IELTS essay templates, you can think about attending my online IELTS classes and getting all the templates for all essay question types free. I used to teach face-to-face -face classes, but now, okay, from 2002 onwards, it's all online. And if you join my online IELTS classes, you are going to get my latest 2022 version of my Level 3 IELTS essay templates. Maybe you are not confident in your understanding of the band descriptors, your grammar or vocabulary, or maybe you just want the best essay templates available. If so, then you can get all the essay templates by joining my online IELTS classes. I know many of you here are also interested to find out more about my IELTS classes and want to know if it's right for you. So before I end this online workshop, I want to share a bit more about my online IELTS classes. But before I talk more about my online IELTS classes, remember in the beginning, I showed you 12 specific points that I'm going to share with you during this workshop. I've already covered five of them. Here's uh, n number six to 12 that have not been covered yet, but which I'm going to touch on in this section. So even if you have no interest in my classes, listen up as you are going to gain a lot of knowledge about IELTS and IELTS preparation in general that you can apply to your own study. So listen up for answers to these seven points as I continue this presentation. The rest of this online workshop is going to be divided into five main sections. Firstly, is there a need for IELTS preparation classes? Why not just self-study? Secondly, I'm going to go more in depth into my online IELTS class package and what it consists of. Thirdly, I'm going to touch on what's different and unique about my online IELTS classes. Fourthly, I'll talk about why online classes are better than face-to-face -face classes. And finally, I'll address who these classes are not for. Firstly, I'd like to address the question of why attend IELTS classes in the first place. Why not just self-study? Some of you are still thinking if you should attend IELTS classes or just do a lot of study at home by yourself. Well, for some people, self-studying is enough, but actually for most people, it isn't enough to pass their IELTS exam. So if you're asking yourself if there's a need to attend IELTS preparation classes, do note that about 60 to 80% of students do not pass their exam on their first try. In fact, worse than that, many students who fail on their first try end up failing more than one time. It could be 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, or even 20 times. Yes, 20 times. Do you know how much that costs 20 times? That's more than 7,000 Singapore dollars. Guys, when you fail, three things are going to happen. You're going to waste your money. You're going to waste your time. And time is something you can't get back. Money, at least you can earn back, but nobody can turn back time. And you're going to be discouraged the more times you try the test and fail. Some people even end up abandoning their dream of immigrating after failing so many times. You've already seen this student just now, Mawandi. He took the IELTS exam 15 times, failed his writing 15 times, always got 6.5. He then attended my classes and passed. Can you imagine how much money he wasted? More than 5,000 Singapore dollars. And he wasted two years of his life, as he mentioned. Thank goodness he wasn't so discouraged that he gave up trying. If you think Mawandi's story is uncommon, then you're wrong. I've heard too many stories from students. You see, most students fail many times before deciding to look for help and for IELTS preparation classes. I know this because I talk to many students every week. These are the typical messages I read every week from students inquiring about my classes. This person took IELTS three times in total. This person took the exam five times, studied by himself and didn't improve. He was stuck at band six. This person took it once, said he was overconfident. 
This person took it five times and felt like giving up. This person took it twice and studied by himself and said it was a waste of money. And believe it or not, the most I know a student has taken the exam is 20 times. He recently messaged me. He was overseas, so he couldn't attend my Singapore classes. At that time, I was only teaching face-to-face -face classes, but now I'm only teaching IELTS online. But more on that later on. Now, don't you think this is crazy? People taking the exam 15 times before passing, or this person taking the exam 20 times and he still has not passed? You know, I started to realize very early on in my IELTS teaching career that this happened very often. I started to see students coming to my IELTS classes who told me they took the exam many times and failed. And it was only after taking it for many times and failing all those times did they start to find IELTS classes to help them prepare properly. To me, it didn't make sense. Why would students take the exam more than once, get the same score all the time, yet still take it three, four, five, ten more times? Why didn't they start to realize they needed help after taking it more than one time and not seeing an improvement? Why sit for the exam more times and waste their money and time? So I started to ask these students exactly this to try to understand their logic. And here are some of their responses. John, he felt five times. He said, I wanted to try myself first. I thought I could make it by myself. Should have taken classes earlier, wasted so much money but most important thing is I pass after attending your class. And this is from Min, who failed nine times. Yes, I think that's what they call insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again by expecting a different result. I thought I didn't need help, but just needed to try harder and harder. I really thought I could do it myself. I should have known I needed help a long time ago. What Min said was correct. That's what insanity is. That's based on a very famous quote. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you do the same things over and over again and expect something different, that's insanity. That's being crazy. But to say that some people are insane or crazy, well, this explanation wasn't satisfying enough for me. I'm naturally curious and want to get to the bottom of things. I continue to be intrigued as to why people behave this way. So I kept wondering why students took the exam so many times and failed so many times. And then one day, I think I found the answer. I call it the curse of the unknown unknowns or CUU. Let me explain what I mean. I came across the four quadrants of knowledge. You've probably seen something like this before. This is a very popular way to understand and describe our knowledge of the world and the resulting effect on our actions and learning. Let me explain a bit. Known knowns are things that we are aware that we know. Unknown knowns are things that we are not aware that we know. Known unknowns are things that we are aware that we don't know. And unknown unknowns are things that we are not aware that we don't know. Let me just focus on three of the important windows and I'm going to relate this to IELTS so you understand what I mean by the curse of the unknown unknowns and why this has led so many people to failing the IELTS repeatedly. So the first window, known knowns, are things that we are aware that we know. Maybe for example, you are aware that you know the essay structure to a causes and solutions essay. Now, what is the effect of this on your learning then? Basically nothing. You don't need to learn more about this particular area because you already know it and that's fine. So this no no knowledge leads to no action in this area, but it's okay. The second window, known unknowns, are things that we are aware that we don't know. That is, we are aware that we don't have knowledge of an area. We know we are not good in this area. Maybe you are aware that you are not good in your understanding or usage of your tenses. So what is the effect of this on our learning? Well, because you are aware that you're weak in tenses, you go and start learning and improving in this area, and that is good. So this known unknown knowledge leads to action, and that's good as you get better in the area you know you're weak in. 
Now, the third window, unknown unknowns, is where the problem lies. There are things that we are not aware that we don't know. These are our blind spots. These are areas of weaknesses that we do not recognize or acknowledge. Say, for example, you're bad at grammar, but you're not aware of that. You think you're good at grammar, but actually you're very bad in this area. What effect does it have on your actions and your learning? Well, you will do nothing. You will not spend time improving your grammar at all because you think you're good at it. This is where it gets dangerous. This unknown, unknown knowledge leads to no action and that's dangerous because the result is that you don't learn or improve in an area you need improvement in. This is what I call the curse of the unknown unknowns. It is about not recognizing your blind spots, not realizing the areas you are bad at, becoming too overconfident and not doing anything to improve your English or IELTS in a particular area. Why is this a curse? Why is this dangerous? Because the student who is blind to what he or she is bad at will not take any action to improve in that area. The result is that if you do not deal with that area of weakness and start improving in the area, you will repeatedly fail in the area. You see, this is how it often works. A student thinks he's prepared and takes the exam and fails. And he says to himself, I need to work on this area. And he does so. He works on that known unknown area, an area he's aware he needs to improve in. So he works on that area and he thinks he's prepared. Then he takes the exam, but he fails again. So he thinks to himself, maybe I need to work on this area. Yeah, I think I'm weak in this area. So again, he works on that known unknown area. Then after some time, he thinks he's prepared. What happens next? He takes the exam and fails yet again. And this cycle repeats itself over and over again. Why? Because of the curse of the unknown unknowns. If you only improve in the known unknown areas and don't address your blind spots, you're going to fail repeatedly. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So the question is, what is the solution to the curse of the unknown unknowns? Well, the first thing you need to do is very simple. Acknowledge you have blind spots and don't trust what you know. Don't think you know everything. Acknowledge there are things that even you are not aware that you don't know. Just because you think you're good at grammar doesn't mean that is so. It could be your unknown unknown. Just because you think you're good at vocab doesn't mean that is so. It could be your unknown unknown. One way to help you overcome this curse of the unknown unknowns is to attend good IELTS preparation classes as this will help you learn all you need to know to do well in your IELTS exam and it will help you to overcome your blind spots. When you start to recognize the things you need to work on which you didn't know before, these unknown unknowns become known knowns. So you have to work on these areas and improve them. Once you do that, they are known knowns and you'll pass your IELTS exam. Another thing to take note if you're asking yourself if you should self-study at home or take IELTS preparation classes is this. Remember how I showed you the IELTS 2002 handbook where it said that students can take up to 200 hours to improve by one IELTS band? And I said recently IELTS said even up to 400 or 500 hours. That's the reality. That's how much work and effort it can take some students to improve by one IELTS band. Up to 200 to 500 hours. The important thing here are the words up to. Not everyone will need that many hours to improve by one band. Some require close to 500 hours to improve by one band. Some require close to 200 hours. Some may only require fewer than 100 hours. Now listen carefully, this is important. From my 10 years of experience, how long it takes to improve depends on how and what you study. So there are actually three ways to study and whichever way you use will determine the number of hours needed for you to improve. The three ways are testing yourself, learning by yourself, and learning in class. You understand what I mean by these three soon as I share with you the story of one of my ex-students, Sohain, 
For now, let's focus on the first two things, testing yourself versus learning by yourself. This is my student Sohai. So the way Sohai prepared for his exam was by going through as many IELTS practice tests or mock tests as he could. After he finished one book of IELTS practice tests, he went on to another book and then another and so on and so on. He tried to complete as many IELTS practice tests as he could. So he took a practice test, timed himself, then looked at the answers, went through his mistakes, then took another practice test and so on and so on. Some years ago, he took the actual IELTS test and failed. He got 6.5 overall and his target was 7.0. Why did he fail? He prepared for the IELTS test wrongly. So what do I mean by wrongly? You see, Sohain believed the most serious and widespread misunderstanding about preparing for the IELTS exam. I call this the number one deadly sin of IELTS preparation. In all my 10 years of IELTS teaching, I can tell you that this is probably more responsible than anything else for people failing IELTS, not just one time, but over and over again. So what is it? It's believing that taking IELTS practice tests or mock tests will help me improve my IELTS level and thus help me better prepare to pass the IELTS exam. Therefore, I'm going to take as many practice tests as I can so I will have a higher chance of passing the IELTS exam. So Soheim believed this and thus the way he prepared was to take as many practice tests as he could. This was what he believed. The greater the number of IELTS practice tests he did, the higher his IELTS score would be. That was his expectations. But the reality was this. In spite of the many IELTS practice tests he took at home, he didn't improve much. And when it came to the actual test, he didn't pass. Okay, he got 6.5. He didn't reach his target score. Now, before I carry on with Sohai's story, let me explain why this thinking and belief is wrong. Let me ask you a question. Why do people take IELTS tests or take tests or exams just in general? Is it to improve their level in whatever test they're taking, language, math, science, whatever? Or is it to find out what level they are at in that subject? Of course, the answer is to find out what level people are at. After all, the definition of test is a set of questions used for finding out how much someone knows about a subject. That's the purpose of taking a test, is to find out your level. Now, if the purpose of taking practice tests is to find out one's level, why do students take practice tests over and over again and expect that the more they do so, the more they will improve and the more they will be prepared for the IELTS exam? Why do people take practice tests over and over again like Sohain did in order to prepare for the IELTS exam? Firstly, students don't know any other way to prepare for the exam. Most students use this method of preparation and so students just follow what everyone else does. You may be thinking, Jonathan, so you're saying that the way to improve one's IELTS score and to be more prepared for the IELTS exam isn't to do practice tests over and over again. If so, how can people improve their IELTS level and be more prepared for the IELTS exam? That's a very good question. To answer that, I want you to think about your high school final year language exam. In many countries, there's a huge important exam that you study for in the last two years of your high school in Singapore, the O-levels or A-levels. Students spend two years preparing for this huge exam. So think back to those years of preparation. Did your teacher teach you new things, strategies, vocabulary, grammar, etc., so you can learn and improve and be better prepared for the final exam? Or did your teacher get you to do past year practice papers over and over again for the entire two years? The answer, of course, is that your teacher taught you new things like strategies, vocabulary, grammar. You were learning and improving. You didn't spend all your language class just doing practice tests over and over again. You see, that's the difference between testing yourself using practice tests and actually learning something to improve your language skills. Doing tests doesn't help you improve your language or skills. Doing them merely helps you to find out your level. I hope you're starting to understand what I'm trying to say. Guys, don't spend your IELTS preparation time just doing practice tests over and over again. Start learning vocabulary, grammar, strategy. Start doing all these things up here and more because that's learning. 
So please understand the difference between testing yourself, which is doing mock tests over and over again, and learning. Focus on learning. That's going to help you improve your IELTS level and be better prepared to pass the IELTS exam. So let me go back to the story of Sohain. So he attended my IELTS classes and took his exam in December 2018. He passed. He got an overall band score of 8.5 instead of 6.5 he got before. And very interestingly, he wrote this. I followed your improvement style. Not just sitting tests again and again. It's very effective. Do you see what he's saying? He's saying that what helped him improve wasn't to do practice tests over and over again, which is the testing method, but it's to actually learn and improve things he learned in class. As I was preparing this presentation and including his WhatsApp messages in my presentation, I thought of contacting him, so I sent him a message. Hi Sohain, how are you? Where are you now? He replied that he's now in Calgary in Canada and started working two weeks before this. He also sent me a picture of himself and this is him taken in Toronto. Anyway, I messaged him because I was interested to find out the difference between his preparation before his first IELTS test when he failed and his preparation after my IELTS classes and before his second test when he passed. So I asked him, could you tell me more about your IELTS preparation? You took the exam twice, right? Once before attending my class and once after, right? How did you prepare for the exam before attending my class, before the first test you took? What was your strategy? His response, before attending your class, my strategy is simply practice more. I will go over as many practice tests as possible. Oh, and he also talked about how my templates and strategies helped him. Anyway, this was exactly what I wanted to hear. This is a confirmation of exactly what I've been saying. Doing practice tests over and over again doesn't help you improve. Learning new things like strategies, using templates, etc. All these help students improve. That's the right way of preparing for your IELTS exam. He changed his preparation methods and improved his score pretty dramatically. So let me summarize. Before his first test, he used a testing way of preparation. These are his words, sitting tests again and again. Before attending a class, my strategy is simply practice more. I will go over as many practice tests as possible. The result is 6.5. After he attended my IELTS classes, he learned many things and he also stopped preparing by testing himself. He used the learning way of preparation. These are his words. I followed your improvement style. Your writing template strategy is very effective. The result is 8.5. So guys, what I want you to learn from all this is don't do practice tests over and over again. Do a few practice tests to be familiar with the format, but don't think that the more practice tests you do, the more your IELTS score will improve. That's not true. I hope you understand why this is the case through what I just explained to you. So the answer to the question we asked just now, so how can people learn and improve their IELTS level and be more prepared for the IELTS exam? The answer is that you should be focusing time on all these above. That's how you improve. Not by taking practice tests, but by learning and improving in the above areas. Remember in the section we were discussing the factors that determine how long you're going to take to improve by one band? Is it going to take 500 hours or 200 hours or 100 hours or less? I mentioned that it depends on how and what you study. And I showed you these three ways of preparing for the IELTS exam. We just covered the first two. We learned that we shouldn't be testing ourselves by doing practice tests over and over again, but we should be learning and improving our language. The next thing I want to touch on is this. Should you learn by yourself or learn in a class? Firstly, I want to say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with learning by yourself. If you plan to go that route, make sure you're learning. You're learning grammar, you're learning vocabulary, you're improving in these areas and eliminating your mistakes. You're becoming familiar with the band descriptors in order to know how to get your target score. You should know what the examiners are expecting of you if you want to get 7.0 for speaking or writing. Make sure you're learning strategies to do our reading, listening, writing, and speaking. For writing, do what I taught you today and create great level 3 IELTS essay templates. So put in the hard work in all this. The important thing is, as mentioned, don't test yourself. You need to actually learn and improve, and you can do it 
yourself if you don't want to attend classes. So both ways are good and both ways are better than testing yourself. But of course, if you learn in a class with an IELTS teacher, you can cut short your learning and improving process. It will take a shorter time to get to your target score. How much shorter depends on a few factors. Just attending any IELTS class will not automatically make you learn faster. It depends on the teaching, the notes and materials, the teacher, etc., etc. Okay. I want to tell you a story about Jason, a previous student of mine. He took the IELTS seven times by studying by himself. He improved from 6.0 to 6.5 over a two year period. That's a long time. He only needed 6.5 and so he passed. Then his agent came back to him and told him he actually needs to get 7.0 because the scoring system for his immigration changed. He knew he could improve to 7.0 because he improved from 6 to 6.5 in two years. But that's two years and seven tries. Now he needed to improve quickly and so he decided to take IELTS classes. After attending my IELTS classes months later, Jason got his 7.0. He wrote, I'm so glad I decided to take your IELTS classes as it helped me shortcut my learning. The templates were good. All I learned probably helped me save months or years. Remember what Buma said before? She said, what I cannot achieve in one, and I don't know what the W means. Yes, you made me do it in one to two months with your notes. This is what learning in a class with good teaching and materials can do. It can help you save months or years. It can help you shortcut your learning process. How does going to a good class help you to shortcut your learning process? Well, precisely because of what we mentioned before, the curse of the unknown unknowns. If you prepare by yourself, you wouldn't be aware of what you don't know and thus can't address your unknown unknowns. Going to a good IELTS class with good materials and a good syllabus and proven results will ensure that you deal with your unknown unknowns. It's one of the best ways to kill this witch and overcome this curse of the unknown unknowns. That's because going to a good IELTS class helps you to find what you need to work on so that you can address your blind spots so that they become known unknowns and eventually known knowns. That's a major benefit of studying in a good IELTS preparation course. Okay, so let me recap and summarize what we've just gone through. A lot of good pieces of information for those who are either thinking of attending my IELTS classes or thinking of studying by themselves. Uh, number one, 60 to 80% of students fail on their first try. Many fail more than one time, up to 15 or 20 times. Uh, why do students fail so many times? Because of insanity, the quote, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And also I talked about the curse of the unknown unknowns. Now, it takes about 200 to 500 hours to improve by one IELTS band. And it depends on how and what you study. There are three ways to study, testing yourself, okay? Don't do this because it doesn't help you improve at all. Don't just take practice tests over and over again. Number two, learning by yourself. You can do this if you want to. Number three, learning in class. Now, this will shortcut your learning and help you overcome the curse of the unknown unknowns. So let's go to number two, my online IELTS class package. Now, I used to teach face-to-face -face classes in Singapore from 2012 to 2022. These are just some images from 2015 to 2022. I taught almost every single weekend for almost 10 years. Okay, of course, I took some breaks, some weekends, but most of the weekends and some weekdays, I was teaching students. And this is what my face-to-face -face classes consisted of. It was $500 for the class and then $600 uh, the last few years. Now, I want to talk about my online IELTS classes. Now, my online IELTS classes consist of everything that I used to teach in my previous face-to-face -face classes, but five things which are better. Number one, more teachings in terms of videos and notes. Number two, better teachings, newer materials, newer templates, as I've been um, making it better over the last five to ten years. 
Number three, better absorption of teachings because the videos can be viewed over and over again and so you can absorb and understand it better. Number four, more support from me. I'm going to talk about that later. And number five, it is much cheaper. Okay, so let's go through my online IELTS classes. First, it consists of 35 plus hours of teaching videos, all right, um, and 400 plus pages of teaching notes, templates, exercises, activities, so on and so forth, right. Um, it will, of course, address listening, reading, writing, and speaking, also grammar and vocabulary. It addresses the academic and general training, and it is for paper, computer, or online IELTS. It has produced 450 plus IELTS passes. So these are the videos. They are already on the learning platform, 35 plus hours of teachings that I used to do and even more. And teachings I used to give in my face-to-face -face classes and even more because like I said, my online classes are better because there are more and better teachings. 400 plus pages of teaching notes, materials, templates, etc. This includes the 53 plus pages of uh, level 3 IELTS essay templates and appendices. And of course, you know the results of this, okay? Um, Iro said, I just follow your pattern in writing, meaning of course the template. She uh, went from 6.0 to 7.0 in writing. Eileen actually went to the exam. She felt she did badly in the reading and she wanted to walk out of the exam place. But, uh, you know, she just stayed on. She followed the template, okay? She, because you don't really have to think so much. I mean, you still have to think a bit because it's not memorizing an essay, but with the templates, you don't have to think so much. Half of it is, you know, if it's memorized, you don't have to think at all. You just focus on filling in the blanks, right? Um, and so she said she scored 6.5 for uh, two attempts, and then she got seven after this exam, after using my templates. And she said the templates are idiot proof. They are idiot proof because basically you just memorize certain phrases and you fill in the blanks. So a lot is done for you. Already T went from 6.5 to seven. And, um, you know, he said, thanks for the strategy given in writing. Now, when you see people going from 6.5 to 7 in writing, don't think it's easy. It is a 0 0.5 increase, but actually it is the most difficult increase in the IELTS exam. Okay, moving from 6.5 to 7 for writing. Many people get stuck at 6.5. Okay, as I mentioned, Mawandi was stuck at it for 15 times. So it is a big deal to go from 6.5 to 7, and that has helped many of my students move um, you know, we've moved from 6.5 to 7 through, through using the essay templates. Hugh um, said, I repeated typing, writing these structures over and over again until I learned them, but he memorized them. Then during the exam, I just felt like I was filling in the blanks with my ideas and points. Wani, all right, uh, entered the exam room feeling nervous, but then again, the templates will take a lot of the anxiety away in your writing because obviously if you've memorized it, you're already halfway there for your writing, your essay. Okay, so it's just like a fill in the blanks. So all the materials, the 35 plus hours of video teachings and 400 plus pages of notes are already on the platform. This is an example of the, this is the platform. So you can take a look at it. There's IELTS listening, IELTS reading, IELTS speaking, IELTS writing, whether you're taking general training or academic for task one. Writing task two, and then this whole chunk of uh, grammar and vocabulary teachings. Very intensive, very good. And that is what has helped a lot of my students uh, improve their writing and speaking. Okay, so this is all from the platform. All right, this, these are the videos are just there. You just have to click them and watch them. And these are the notes, the links to them in PDF form. Let me talk about my grammar and vocabulary teachings. I already mentioned to you how it is very easy for many students to get stuck at 6.5 for writing. If you get 777 seven, seven for these three criteria, but for grammar, grammatical range and accuracy, you get six only because to get seven, it says produces frequent error-free sentences. This means to the examiner that you cannot make too many mistakes. Of course, don't ask me exactly how many mistakes you can make. Okay? The examiners are trained so they know whether you are six or seven level for your grammar. So if you make too many grammatical mistakes, you are going to get six for grammar and that's going to pull down your writing score to 6.5. Okay, so it is a challenge for many students to get seven for both writing and speaking, but especially for writing and the major challenge is really the grammar. Because if you make too many grammatical mistakes for both writing and speaking, 
you will get six rather than seven. Now, this is uh, uh, part of my grammar and vocabulary class for writing. It helps in both writing and speaking. These are just some of the notes I teach uh, on the 12 most common grammar and vocabulary mistakes. This is especially useful for students targeting 7.0, but not just for students targeting 7.0. Okay, this is not just the only thing that I'm, I'm giving you and the only teachings I'm giving you for the grammar and vocabulary part of my online course. There are lots of other uh, areas I help you improve grammar and vocabulary in, but this is actually one unique teaching because I, I kind of uh, came up with it after uh, realizing that many of my students, when I was teaching one-to-one -one about 10 years ago, I realized that many of my students created them, made the same mistakes over and over again. And so I started to note all these mistakes and create a teaching and study how I can teach them. And this um, teaching came out of it. Remember just now we went through the mistakes by students and I, you know, I had this uh, um, two, had numbers two, five, and then I had total in total 12 right so this is 10 and 9 and then I said I'm gonna tell you exactly what all these numbers mean okay right well these are the 12 most common grammar and vocabulary mistakes that's why I created that teaching because I know these 12 mistakes are made over and over again okay grammar and vocabulary is very important as some of these students have mentioned okay some of them finally passed they realized that grammar is important all right uh this student said that um for Tasu, if you didn't tell me the importance of grammar i think i would have ignored it so the 12 common grammatical mistakes vocabulary and grammar mistakes okay um that helped this student pass he says he can't believe that i can get seven in writing now some people actually uh pretty observant they have said to me before when, when they've gone through some of my webinars and my videos they said to me when they message me they say jonathan i see so many grammar mistakes in the english of your students who wrote your testimonials because i have 400 plus 450 plus and more testimonials on my website whatsapp messages so they say i, I look at these whatsapp messages and they it contain so many grammatical mistakes are you sure those students could have gotten seven for writing okay that's very observant and my response is exactly that's a good point that's the beauty of using a great set of ielts writing templates you minimize the actual number of mistakes you make in your essay when you use the templates that's how the templates actually help you your your, your grammar vocabulary score may be way lower than you know what it should be but because you're using the phrases and sentences from the templates it is actually reducing the number of mistakes that you make now you the students always going to make mistakes because there's always stuff that they have to write okay the templates uh, you still have to fill in the blanks. It is not a memorized essay. So you will make mistakes. The student will make mistakes, but the number of mistakes will be minimized because they will also be using really good, perfect, grammatically uh, correct sentences through the template. So both have a role to play. Okay, uh, How I'm helping students to um, overcome the greatest barrier to getting their, you know, their, passing their IELTS writing and getting 7.0 or whatever score they need it is grammar and vocabulary um, and I'm the way I'm helping them is that I give them templates that minimize the number of mistakes that they make and also improve their cohesion their grammar vocabulary not just minimize the mistakes you make but actually that they will use good grammar vocabulary and cohesion but I also get them to go through my grammar and vocabulary teachings all right many many hours of teachings and that's going to help them also improve their grammar vocabulary. So I kind of uh, address this problem from all angles and from all sides. Okay, the templates, and also I want you to improve. I want students to improve their grammar and vocabulary. Now, uh, new teachings, videos, and notes added regularly for free. So this is uh, just to show you um, from 2012 to 2021. These are the different levels I created. In terms of level one then level two then uh, level 2b then level three this is really for the launch of my online ielts classes the 2022 version which has 53 plus pages but i'm always creating better and better and better material so for example if you were here in, in 2018 19 20 you haven't got this yet but i, I was creating it then so i can release it for my online classes but in a few years time or maybe even this year or next year wherever whatever um, new materials i'm always releasing them Okay, I'm always releasing them. Um, so 
2022 onwards, I am creating level four templates, which is going to consist of uh, main points, sentence templates, and then level five, which is really focusing on a supporting points. I have many ideas, right? But I'm going to give you a sneak peek of some new teachings that I'm going to give students of my online classes for free. I do not charge them extra because I give them for free. I get feedback and I improve it. Then I launch it eventually, right? So all new materials will always be given to students. Uh, so say, for example, um, this uh, template, causes and solutions, essay type. This, remember, this is just one of the type. And this part, okay, all these words and phrases are given to you. These are all very general words and phrases. Uh, the specific solutions, of course, is not given to you because it really depends on the question, right? The question, what the issue is, what the problem is, you got to come up with your own solutions. But I'm trying to create solutions for students. So I've created this, all right? Uh, I've these are ideas and these are specific actions which contain good vocabulary and collocations. So I'm giving additional uh, materials, creating additional and better materials for students. And this will help you to, you know, probably uh, you, you can use this in any, most likely any causes and solutions essay type because you can uh, suggest a solution of educating or providing funding, a, a carrot approach, meaning rewarding governments, reward the government rewarding organizations or their citizens, or a stick approach, punishing, imposing a law, fining, etc., etc., etc. So these are good points that um, will help students if they can't think of ideas. These are ideas, but if they can't, these are not just ideas. These are words and phrases and good vocabulary but i went one step further because that's not good enough for me i want to create even better and better and better materials i don't just want ideas and a few words and phrases there i want templates so this is what i created for educate um if one of your solutions involve the government raising public awareness you can use this as a point fill in the blanks with whatever issue then the, the first sentence after the main point could be this or this and then the second sentence after either of them could be this, right? So do you see how you have to fill in even fewer words and fewer blanks in your essay? I'm trying to do that for my students so that they will make even fewer mistakes. So this is how it looks like when you use that template I just gave you. This is, again, this is my level four template. This is something that I'm giving my students. But again, the whole, the full thing is not released yet. I'm releasing it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working on it right now. Okay, so as you can see, these underlying words and words in bold are those things that you just have to um, put in. These are the fill in the banks. Everything else, all the rest, all came from this template, and it 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 can fit different causes and solutions question type. You know, most likely you can always do something to educate the public, to raise public awareness. Right. So this is basically my level four essay template I'm going to I'm working on it now I'm going to give to my students and then eventually also my level five all right so that's what I mean by new teachings are added regularly for free now the next thing is the total study time needed is about 40 to 100 hours it really depends on how hard uh, you want to work okay uh, it depends on a lot of factors all right um, but uh, just note that uh, you can put in you should be putting in I recommend 40 to 100. If you want to spend more than 100 hours, yes, there's a lot of work there. It depends on how uh, how much of a, you know, how, how diligent you are because there's enough work to last more than 100 hours, right? Um, fortnightly, live Zoom classes. This will be live and also recorded. Now, please take note of these Zoom classes. These Zoom classes are not where the main teachings are. The main teachings are here. Okay, 35 hours and 400 pages of notes is already there. Don't go and wait for the Zoom classes. Many people love to, you know, wait for the Zoom classes because they think, oh, it's very important. No, actually, it's the least important thing. Why? Because the, the most important teachings are already there in the 35 plus hours of videos and 400 pages of notes. So what is a Zoom class? Two main parts, question and answers. Go through the videos, go through the notes. If you have any questions, come. All right. Uh, anything related to IELTS, ask me. Sometimes I may do some activities and teachings also. The length will be one to two hours. Again, depends on how many questions and, you know, what the questions there, all right, uh, uh, what activities are planned, all right? But you don't have to attend it. Some students don't attend it. Some students, they got questions, they just WhatsApp me, 
if they want a bit more in depth, then I say come to the Zoom. I'm, I'll, I'll I'll go more in depth with you. I can't do it right then and then when they ask me the question, but um, I can do it in the Zoom class, right? And it's going to be held one evening, probably seven thirty to eight thirty or nine thirty. Again, it's impossible to cater to everyone's timing, so I, I don't want to get you know dozens and hundreds of students. Uh, can you make it this time? No, I'm going to choose a time. I'm going to choose a time that you know it is good for most students. And then if you can make it, you can make it. If you can't make it, don't worry. You can still WhatsApp me, ask me the question. Um, and and you, you, you can ask me the question. I can try to re, um, address it in Zoom and you can watch the recording because it will be recorded. But again, let me tell you, this is not where the main teachings are. The main teachings are already on the platform. Lastly, you get my WhatsApp number to ask me any questions, okay? I don't know any teacher who gives their WhatsApp number. Um, I may be the first in the whole world. I don't know. Maybe there are a few others, but I can guarantee you most students do not, uh, most teachers do not give their students a WhatsApp number. I've always been giving students my WhatsApp number, even during my face-to-face -face classes. After their four uh, classes, after they've attended all my classes, they can still ask me any question. Okay? And I still get students asking me questions. Of course, I trust my students not to WhatsApp me every single day. Right? You have to be diligent and do your work. Go through the um, the notes and videos, etc., etc. If you have any questions, no problem. Just WhatsApp me. So what's the price? this now my face-to-face -face class used to cost 600 singapore dollars uh, now my online class is only 400 singapore dollars okay that's the normal online class fees however i, I kind of just launched this in 2022 so for a limited time only during this launch period i'm not sure how long this will last i'll be offering a launch discount of 150 dollars off the normal online class price so it will be 250 Singapore dollars instead of 400 Singapore dollars uh, there's a condition unfortunately well actually it's fortunately because I think all of you will want to do this which is that you have to have written feedback on the online class the positives and negatives that's actually so that I can actually improve this and once it gets out of the launch period then I know it's going to be better and it will be back to $400 now if you're not sure if you're watching this video and you're not sure if it's um, I'm still in the launch period then please ask me all right um, so $250 divided by 35 hours, that's about $7 per hour. Okay, that's incredible and amazing, right? $7 per hour of teaching. Actually, that's more because you're not just talking about 35 hours. You get Zoom classes too, right? Um, and then new materials, new videos, new materials coming. So it's actually, you know, uh, 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 less than $7 per hour. But let me just show you, I asked somebody... Um, to do a bit of a survey, pay the person to do a bit of a, uh, a survey and, and to find out all the different IELTS classes in Singapore. And this is the table that they came up with, all right? I wanted to know what my competitors are charging and what they're offering. So this is basically um, the, the the class, the best IELTS classes in Singapore, right? I'm not going to mention the school. I don't think it's right to mention the name of the school, okay? Um, but as you can see, uh, this particular school, very big name, um, 40 hours of teaching, 2,000 or 16 hours, 800. It's about $50 per hour of teaching. Uh, school number 2, 3, 4, 5, these are all pretty much the same. So this is kind of like the market price, the standard price, which comes out to be about 25 to uh, 30 hours or so per teaching. Um, now, there's one that's very cheap, $12 per hour, very competitive in terms of my rate. But this, you have to uh, go... You know, 30 plus weeks, you have to pay $8,000 in total. All right. So if you're willing to fork out that much money and, 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 and study that long, then okay, you can, it's a good price. All right. But mine's only $7 per hour. In fact, it is less than $7 per hour. I want to tell you something. When I say 35 hours of teachings, I'm talking about me teaching every moment for 35 hours. If you go to um, a, a school, because I used to teach face-to-face -face in the class, right? Uh, Every if there's a two hours of class teaching, it's not two hours of the teacher speaking and, and continuous teaching, right? You have breaks and then you have students doing their home uh, work there, doing activities there. So it's actually not continuous teaching. It's probably about half the time of a class is actually um, teaching time where teacher is teaching. So when I say 35 hours, I'm saying it's all me teaching, okay? So that's probably equivalent to about 70 to 80 hours of class time. If I were to teach a face-to-face -face class and do all these materials, it would probably be equivalent to 70 to 80 hours of uh, class time, all right? And if that's the case, then uh, the cost per hour is probably 350 only, which is about 10 times less, right? So that is the value you are going to get uh, with my classes, right? Um, now, 
So I want to mention one final thing. And that is during this launch period, not only is the price 250 Singapore dollars rather than 400 Singapore dollars. And by the way, if you're not in Singapore, obviously this is an online class, so you can still pay for it. You just have to convert the price, right, to whatever currency it is. And that's a, 250 Singapore dollars is probably around, I don't know, 150 to 175 US dollars. I don't know, uh, around there, right? Um, so during this launch period, if it is still during this launch period, it will be 250 rather than 400 Singapore dollars. And I'm also going to offer this, which is if it's during this launch period, again, you got to ask me if it's still during this launch period, you get unlimited weekly Zoom classes. What do I mean by unlimited weekly Zoom classes? If it's outside the launch period, the cost will be 400 and you probably, I'll probably give about two to three months of Zoom, live Zoom classes. But right now I'm giving unlimited. Unlimited means you can attend anytime, forever. Of course, not until I die because I'm not sure if I'm going to teach until I die. But at least for the next few months and even years, I don't envision myself not teaching and not having a live Zoom class every fortnight. So if you're taking the IELTS exam in six months or 12 months or one year or two years time, you can just start. In fact, I recommend that you start immediately and go through all this, um, you know, this right here because it's, it's a lot of work that you will need to do. And you can always attend the fortnightly Zoom classes all right so this is if it's during the launch period it is 250 singapore dollars rather than 400 and unlimited of course uh this the fair use policy which means you're not going to expect that i'm going to be giving you uh, fortnightly zoom classes until i die because i don't think i'm going to be teaching for the rest of my life okay but definitely over the next few years um if you're interested you can whatsapp me at of course uh, plus 65 nine seven six eight one zero five four now, the third thing is, uh, what's so unique and different about my online IELTS classes? Okay, number one, proven results. Um, it's all there for you to see, 450 plus student testimonials. Um, please go to this webpage, IELTSuniversity.com forward slash testimonials, and you can read all about what the, my ex students have said. Okay, I encourage you to do so. Um, I don't know whether there's any other class in Singapore or the world that actually has that many student testimonies. Again, 450 is not not the total number who have passed, right? Because obviously, uh, like I said, these are only those people who have messaged me. A lot of people um, don't message me, all right, when they pass. And of course, my writing um, testimonials, I'm very proud of this because all of these students here failed their writing at least once, if not more times, before coming to my class. So they were struggling, they are struggling, they are struggling, came to my class. Of course, I specialize in IELTS writing. Please take note, this workshop is on the essay template formula, so this is on focus on writing, right? But I teach all components, not just writing. But writing, of course, is the most difficult component. And all these students struggled until they came to my class. They used my templates and they improved by 0 0.5 up to 2.0. And most importantly, they passed the IELTS after failing at least once or many more times for many people. All right. And lastly, please go to this um, link also, forward slash class feedback to read about what students um, have uh, written about my classes after they attend my class. All right. I used to do that a lot. Um, and I used to collect all these feedback forms. So these are some things that students have written. Now, um, the second thing that is very uh, unique is the detailed teaching materials and notes. Obviously, um, nobody has the essay templates like I have uh, created them. Again, please go and search online. Um, you will not see any IELTS essay templates at the level that you are looking at because I'm probably the only person throughout the world who actually, I wouldn't say I started to create essay templates first, but I'm probably the person who has um, not just created them, but made them, um, created them with a lot of detail, the different types, and continue over the last five to 10 years to improve them more and more and more and more. All right. So uh, you will not see anything like this. Again, this is not about memorizing an essay. This is not about, you know, I'm going to use a template, I'm going to get seven guarantee. No, there's no guarantee for anything. But this is definitely going to improve your writing and make it better than it would have been without the use of these templates. That is something I can almost guarantee you. Um, okay, unless you are like an 8.0 student trying to get a 9.0, which nobody is like that, okay. 
um, then this that's prob- this is probably not catered for you, but you will still improve and learn in this area. But um, every student, all right, will definitely improve. These templates, you need to work hard. I have never said in my class, you come and it's easy, right? I already told you, you put 40 to 100 hours, better if you can put 100 plus hours into my whole online course. But you have to understand this, okay? But don't worry, you have, you know, my WhatsApp and you have the Zoom class. So if you don't understand it, you will still be able to ask me. But it is a cha- these are challenging and unique materials. These are not simple materials you get from the textbooks that you can buy for, you know, 10 20 $30, okay? Uh, you will never find these in textbooks. Again, I have already mentioned the reason why. Because most textbooks and most schools, they don't believe, they believe in a learner-centered uh, educational philosophy where they are putting the burden on learners and students to learn and to try and error, improve, so on and so forth. I don't believe in that. Now, I believe in that learner-centered philosophy, as I already mentioned, but only for the purpose of you know learning in general. But when it comes to exam, when you're paying so much for the exam and you need to pass your whole life's future depend on passing the exam, then you don't want to put the burden on students. You, I as a teacher put the burden on myself, the responsibility on me to provide as much materials to spoon feed you as much as I can so that you can pass the exam. And that's why uh, I've created these materials and you'll never see them in um, textbooks out there, okay? I already showed you Mawandi, all right? Uh, took the exam failed 15 times for his um, writing. He passed the rest, failed his writing 15 times. He got 6.5. Remember what I said? 6.5 to 7 is actually the most difficult increase in IELTS for writing. Okay, So you may think, oh, it's only 0.5 increase. No, that is actually the most difficult um, in, in 0.5 increase in the IELTS exam. So uh, over the past two years, he said, except for the IELTS 15 times, I've attended at least three IELTS workshops and classes. Jonathan's class is the cheapest I found on the market and the best I experienced. Now, he said it's the cheapest when it was my face-to-face class. Now it's even cheaper with my online class, all right? Uh, this is another of my students, Sora, all right? She also attended many different classes. She said, I wasted so much time and money in other schools and tuition. I tuition, tuition meaning private one-to-one tuition. Many times with whatever, whatever tutor, I went to this school. I also went to this other school, all useless. They just wasted my time because they had no techniques. Thank you so much for your real IELTS class. So you need strategies and techniques. Nobody has the templates like I have, right? Definitely, okay? I've put probably in probably 100 200, 300 hours into creating that. And when you see it, you will know. That's why it's 53 plus pages. Okay, the third thing that makes my online IELTS classes so unique is the fact that I'm an IELTS specialist. Um, You've heard of this phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. That basically means that you can do everything pretty okay, but you do not specialize or you're not especially good at any one thing. Right, so um, that's what I did as an English teacher for many years. Uh, initially, when I started to teach, I was a jack of all trades, master of none. I taught in various English schools. I taught a bit of IELTS, a bit of this, a bit of lower level, upper level, intermediate, advanced, so on and so forth. Right, um, but then in the last ten years or so, I decided to specialize in IELTS, and that makes actually a difference because when you specialize in a particular area, you get better at it. That's why I wanted to specialize in preparing students for the IELTS exam. I want, I love to create materials. I love to create, for example, I have the ideas of essay templates and and a lot of ideas about how to, you know, uh, make it better and better. And so because I specialize in IELTS preparation, I was able to create these materials because I was thinking about IELTS preparation all day long, right? And that enabled me to create the templates that you have learned about today. So the other thing about my online IELTS classes is that I am the only teacher. I don't get anybody else to teach. I'm always there. And that's important because if you go to other schools, they will hire a teacher. The teacher will not be a specialist most likely. They will have to teach different levels. And they will also not have the incentive to create their own materials because they're just a paid employee, right? With a paid employee mindset. For me, I actually own this school. I've been teaching and specializing in IELTS preparation and therefore I have the incentive to create better materials. As the better materials I create, 
the higher chance there is for my students to pass the IELTS exam and then people will come to my classes. So it's all about whether you specialize in something, it's all about whether you have an employee mindset or whether you are really, you really have the incentive and the motivation to create better materials and teach in a better way. Number four, why online classes are better than face-to-face -face classes. Okay, so this is very interesting. So over the last 10 years, I focused on IELTS preparation. I taught face-to-face one-to-one initially. Then I went to group classes. But throughout this time, I was also teaching online. So I've seen both online classes and face-to-face -face classes. I've seen the results of both. I've seen the students. I've seen the motivation. I've seen how hard people work, so on and so forth. In future, from 2022 onwards, I will only be focusing on online classes. Why? I've had the 10 years of experience. I've seen both. I've seen the results of both. The reason why I'm only focusing on online classes right now is students will perform better. I've seen the results and I've seen the differences. And that's why I'm going to tell you the reasons why I believe that online classes are better than face-to-face -face classes, which kind of goes against the grain. Not many people think that, but they have not really considered all this and they have not seen from first-hand experience what I've actually experienced over the last 10 years, seeing how uh, uh, students perform online, seeing how students perform uh, in face-to-face -face classes, seeing the mindset that they have, the study routine that they have. I'm going to talk about all of this, all right? But firstly, let's be honest. You don't go to an IELTS class to make friends, okay? The IELTS class isn't a social club. If you want to make friends, then obviously um, going to a face-to-face -face class is much better than going to an online class, okay? But I'm not interested in uh, creating a community. I'm interested in training students to pass the IELTS exam. That's the main focus of you, and that's my main focus. It's all about passing your IELTS exam. If you agree with me on this, that it's all about passing your IELTS exam, then hear what I have to say. I decided to stop face-to-face -face classes and focus on online classes because I truly believe that online classes are much better and more effective for the student for four reasons I'm going to share with you. And as a result, the student would stand a better chance of passing the IELTS exam. That's the most important thing. All right, what helps a student pass the IELTS exam? What puts a student in the right mindset? What puts the student in uh, the right study routine? What helps the student absorb material? So these are the things I'm going to talk about. The first reason why I believe online IELTS classes is better than face-to-face -face classes is because online teachings can be more fully absorbed and understood as compared to teachings from face-to-face -face classes, right? There's no use attending a face-to-face -face class but not being able to fully absorb and understand what's being taught. If the teachings are too easy, and that's what is um, happening in a lot of schools and classes, such that everyone can easily absorb and understand them, this is what I call, and I've taught this and talked about it in my other uh, videos, this is what I call teaching to the lowest common denominator because textbooks and classes and teachers want to teach to the lowest common denominator so everybody can understand the weaker students too and therefore there's no complaints actually there are complaints um, the stronger students will not be happy right okay but it's easier to teach to the lowest common denominator um, because it doesn't have to be too challenging you don't have to actually challenge yourself as a teacher to work on getting better materials out um, and everybody will really understand everything you teach because it's so easy, right? So anyway, if the teachings are too easy such that everyone can easily absorb and understand them, they probably won't be challenging enough to actually get you to improve. That's the reason why I don't believe in teaching to the lowest common denominator. My materials are definitely challenging. Now, if the teachings are challenging and will help you improve, some students may need more time to absorb and understand them. That's the problem I kind of face in my face-to-face -face classes because my teachings and my materials were so challenging. Some students asked me, can they take this class again? Well, obviously I said they can't because students can't take more than one class, right? They're just paying for uh, one class and um, they can't take more than they've paid for. And I don't like it that, you know, some, some students, not all, but some students found it so challenging that they couldn't completely absorb it. And um, I asked myself, should I make it easier? But then I decided, no, I'm not going to make it so easy because then they're not going to be challenged and they, they won't pass. My concern is in helping students to pass, right? So sometimes some students can find my teachings challenging. In fact, many students will find it challenging, right? Because you won't find it elsewhere. My templates are not easy to understand, but they will help you. 
the most important thing is that when you start to overcome that initial barrier and start to understand it, they will help you to do better than you could have done otherwise, right? Easy teachings are not going to help you to pass your IELTS exam. So that's one reason why I decided to teach online so that I can provide challenging teachings that will, that I know will help students improve. With the class being online and the videos being played, being able to be played over and over again, that will ensure that students will fully absorb and understand the challenging teachings that can help them truly improve. And that's one reason why I like online classes. I'm able to provide challenging teachings. Students who are weaker can, you know, replay the video over and over again. Students who are stronger in particular areas could just, you know, just listen to it once. That's fine. You know, you can pace yourself. It is self-paced in a sense. All right. If it's challenging, listen to it again. Number two, second reason why I think online classes are better than face-to-face -face classes uh, is that online classes offer better personal attention and support. Okay, many students think that there will be more personal attention and support given by the teacher in a face-to-face -face class. This is not true. This is a misconception. In my 10 years of teaching face-to-face, -face, most students don't ask many questions in class. Why? Because they are too shy, number one. Number two, because they haven't had time to absorb everything yet. Many students are shy because English is their second language. They don't ask questions. And also, they have not had time to absorb everything yet. Right? That's fine. That's understandable. That's why I gave my face-to-face -face class students my WhatsApp. They could ask me questions anytime, even after their face-to-face -face classes ended. Right? That was when I was teaching face-to-face. -face. Most students ask questions through WhatsApp outside of class. That's what I realized. Right? Most of my students, they don't ask questions during my face-to-face -face class. They ask outside after they've absorbed everything. Right? Then they ask questions. Then they ask good questions. Students need time to absorb everything, especially if your teachings are good. Then they can ask good questions that will help them learn and improve. If you're still thinking of taking face-to-face -face classes, find out if you have the teacher's WhatsApp number first and find out if you can ask questions anytime, even after your face-to-face -face classes. And most likely you can. Most likely you won't even get the teacher's WhatsApp number in the first place, right? Uh, don't don't bother going to a face-to-face -face class. That's my advice to you. Just because you think there's more personal attention and support, that's not true, all right? Um, you're going to get actually more personal attention and support in my classes because I give you my WhatsApp number and you will have that fortnightly, weekly Zoom. So take your time, absorb the teachings, ask good questions, and learn properly. I decided to move to online classes so that I can provide good and challenging teachings that will help students improve. And I know some would need to replay my teachings over and over again. That's fine. And thus putting it online would be ideal for this. And once they've absorbed my teachings, they can ask better questions if they have any, and they will always have my WhatsApp number and fortnightly Zoom class to ask questions. Number three, the third reason why I think online classes are better than face-to-face -face classes is online classes encourage a better study mindset. I think this is one of the most important, um, you know, and underestimated, but one of the most important benefits of um, attending an online class. Okay, for a face-to-face -face class, the study mindset encourages this. Okay, they encourage this kind of mindset. Many students have this kind of mindset. I prefer to go to face-to-face -to -face classes as it will discipline, motivate, force me to go to classes and study. I'll focus on my face-to-face -face class teachings and prioritize that over homework as I don't have much motivation to do anything outside of class. So if you're going to the face-to-face -face class because it will discipline you to actually study and you know be present in the class to study, then you, you're saying that you need somebody to motivate you, you need somebody to discipline you. And obviously, are you going to do your homework? Nope, why not? Because nobody's gonna, the teacher's not going to come to your class to force you to do your homework. All right? So that's the kind of mindset that is actually encouraged all right, um, for a face-to-face -face class. And I've seen that in my students over the last 10 years. I started to realize this very early on. Students will attend face-to-face -face classes but have no time for homework. They attended face-to-face -to -face class to force themselves to study in class. Even though I told them the importance of doing their homework, most students wouldn't do so because they didn't have the correct mindset. Face-to-face -face classes encourage them to prioritize what they learn during their face-to-face -face classes over everything else. And they ended up not doing much of their homework and of course not performing well, All right? You can't just rely on a small amount of teachings. Um, so in the end, this is one reason why I decided to teach online. I know many who only wanted face-to-face -face classes with the wrong mindset. Think about it. If you, th if you think, oh, I'm going to have face-to-face -face classes because um, it's going to discipline me to study, oops, you better think about it. Do you have the motivation to pass the IELTS exam, to put enough work to pass the IELTS exam, okay? Uh, 
because if you have that kind of mindset, you will not be doing your homework. You will just be attending class. And I can tell you that class teachings are never enough. Even during my face-to-face -face class teachings, I always gave a lot of homework. So through teaching online, I wanted to let students know that they cannot prioritize face-to-face -face teachings over their homework, of course, because this is not, there's no face-to-face -face teachings, right? Everything is important. In my online classes, there's no division. There's no such thing as face-to-face -face versus what. You always have to discipline yourself and you are going to learn to discipline yourself. Students have to be in the right mindset if they wanted to pass their IELTS. They cannot rely on attending face-to-face -face classes to force them to study and learn if they did. So they will not do their homework because nobody's forcing them to do so. They would then fail IELTS. Therefore, students would have a better chance of passing IELTS as online classes encourage a better study mindset. And fourthly, the reason why online classes, I believe, are better than face-to-face -face classes after 10 plus years of teaching face-to-face -face and online. The fourth reason is that online classes encourage a more consistent study routine, another very important underestimated benefit of online classes. Face-to-face -face classes encourage a very inconsistent study routine. What do I mean by inconsistent? Student has to wait for the first face-to-face -face class to start, which is a waste of time. Student has to wait for the next face-to-face -face classes to continue, which is a waste of time. Because you always have to depend, uh, your, your studies always depend on the class. You're waiting for the class. You have to attend the class. You cannot study ahead. You have waiting for the class. If your class has not started, you will not do anything, right? So you are depending on your face-to-face -face classes. If a class is missed due to unforeseen, uncontrollable events, of which there are many, all right, as you've seen in the last uh, few years during the pandemic, things we do not foresee happen. Um, your boss telling you you have to work and you cannot attend your face-to-face -face class. You've got to postpone it. Well, I mean, you, 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 you can't attend it. Uh, um, you know, your hometown, people in your hometown, uh, sickness in your family, your hometown, your kids, transport, weather, etc. So many things that are unforeseen, that are uncontrollable. Now, if you miss a class because of these events, and if a free makeup class is given, and again, not all schools provide free makeup classes, but if a free makeup class is given, the student has to wait weeks to take that class again. Again, waste of time. So you're always depending on the attendance of your face-to-face -face class. Now, on the other hand, online classes encourage a more consistent study routine. It's much more consistent. Students can learn anytime, anywhere, as teachings are online. If you're in the airport, going back to your hometown because of an emergency, or you're on holidays, you're in the airport, you're here, you're there, whatever it may be, as long as you have internet access, you can study. You do not have to wait to go to a class, okay? You can study anytime, you can study anywhere. And if you have a disruption, you don't have to wait weeks, weeks, weeks to, you know, to attend that class because it's all online. Just the next day, go and, uh, you know, go through the teachings, right? So a student can plan a study schedule that will face f much fewer disruptions and can just plan ahead and not be dependent on face-to-face -face class attendance. Very important. When you plan ahead, you are planning to succeed. When your plans fail all the time, you will fail also, okay? Disruptions to study schedule and routine would cause students to lose momentum, enthusiasm, and ultimately motivation to study. This is very important. When you are constantly disrupted, you keep have to waiting weeks to attend the class. Um, you cannot just, you know, plan to, you know, go online for four hours tonight or tomorrow morning because you have free time. No, you can't do that because you got to wait for the class, right? The face-to-face -face class. If there's so much disruption, you lose momentum, enthusiasm, and motivation, that's very important. This uh, loss of motivation, ha I've seen that over and over again, okay? When that happens, you really get discouraged. Um, this is why, this is an open secret among schools. This is why most face-to-face -face class students actually don't attend all the classes they pay for and they drop out. Many students drop out. I've been teaching for 10 years. Many students drop out. Why? Unforeseen, uncontrollable events causing them to have disruption in their study schedule, causing them to lose motivation, getting discouraged, and they just drop out, all right? Um, that happens in a face-to-face -face class, but for an online class, that will not happen because you plan, you know, you got to plan initially, discipline yourself, but you got to plan, and your plan's going to work out because even if you have one or two days whereby there are unforeseen circumstances, you can make it up the following day, right? Okay, unlike for face-to-face -face class, it's always dependent on the attendance of the face-to-face -face 
classes. Number five, who these classes are not for. So these classes are not for people who want guarantees, okay? Because there are no guarantees, results are not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed a 7.0. I think you're all intelligent enough. I don't want to insult your intelligence to know that anyone who says that they're going to guarantee you any result is not telling the truth. So I'm not going to tell you that you will get a, the result that you want, nor am I even going to tell you that using my templates will get you a 7 or whatever grade. No. All I can guarantee you with respect to using my essay templates is that you will score better using them than you would without using them. Okay, All my 450 plus students who um, came to my class and then passed their IELTS exam after attending my class, well, I wouldn't say all, but I would say a large majority actually worked very hard. There are some who just came and, you know, did not work uh, very hard, but, you know, took the essay templates and that was enough to help them pass the IELTS exam. But most of them worked hard. So you have to work hard also. Uh, this is my guarantee to you, the only thing I can guarantee. I will share all my knowledge with you, all my secrets, template strategies. I'll teach you every strategy that I know of to help you pass your IELTS exam. I'll teach you everything that has helped all these 450 plus students pass their IELTS exam. That's all I can do. You have to work hard, okay? You have to work hard. But I'm not saying that hard work is all that's needed because part of the philosophy of my IELTS classes is that I've created a lot of materials where you can work smart. So you work hard, but also you work smart by using the materials. The essay template is a great example of how you're working smart. You're not just working hard, but you also need to work hard. But the shortcut, the methods I've given you in my classes to, you know, bypass uh, certain things to help you score in certain things in an easier way to help you improve more dramatically, all these what I call smart work strategies, like the templates, okay, this is given to you, but you still need to work hard. There is no getting around working hard for anything. Imagine if you combine all the strategies, the templates, with the hard work. That's how you're going to really improve and do well in your IELTS exam. Anyway, for those of you who don't want to waste your time and be confused by all the IELTS books and websites, for those of you who want to cut short your learning process by going through tried and tested teachings and unique strategies that have produced 450 plus IELTS passes, for those of you who want to pass on your next try and be on your way to Australia, Canada, the UK, so on and so forth, if you don't want to live out the definition of insanity in your life, doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results, if you want to overcome the curse of the unknown unknowns, if you don't want to be blind to words or unaware of the things that are preventing you from passing your IELTS exam, if you don't want to go through this vicious cycle of only working on your known knowns and thus failing always, and if instead you want to attend an IELTS preparation course so you can find out what you need to work on so that your unknown knowns will become known unknowns and will become known knowns and you'll pass your IELTS exam. Then this is the online classes that I have for you. Again, let me repeat, 35 plus hours of videos, 400 plus pages of teaching notes, templates, exercises, New teachings, videos and notes added regularly for free, addressing listening, reading, writing and speaking, grammar and vocabulary, academic and general training. This is for paper, computer and online IELTS and has produced 450 plus IELTS passes, the total time needed to study of about 40 to 100 hours. Unlimited, if this is during the launch period, unlimited fortnightly live Zoom classes, if this is not during the uh, launch period, then it'll be about two or three months maximum of live Zoom classes. And my WhatsApp number to ask me any question. The normal price for my online IELTS classes is $400, but during the launch period, it is 
and fifty Singapore dollars. If you're not sure if this is during the launch period, just WhatsApp me now. Let me know you're interested, and I will let you know. Now, if you're interested to join my online IELTS classes, then this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, you may ask, when's the best time to start your IELTS preparation? There's this old saying: the best time to plant a tree was twenty years ago. The second best time is now. So the best time to start your IELTS preparation was last week. The second best time is now. Why do people start their IELTS preparation so late? Well, reason number one: underestimating the difficulty of the IELTS exam. Okay, people tend to think they are better than they actually are, and I really mentioned that to you about the curse of the unknown unknowns. People don't know what they don't know, and they think that they know more than they know, and they have so many blind spots. So that's the reason why they think, oh, the IELTS exam is not too difficult, and therefore I'll just, you know, I'll start later on. I'll start a few months before I need to take the exam or whatever it may be, right? So that's reason number one. Reason number two: life gets in the way. Okay. This is obviously something that everybody knows. Unforeseen, unexpected circumstances, something that you never foresee or expect, it will get in the way, and it always happens. It delays your start, delays, delays, delays. All right. So my recommendation: don't let life get in the way. Plan, as they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Reason number three. And this is, you know, a misconception by students. Okay, they desire for a short time gap. So basically, they say, "I want to take the IELTS exam soon after preparation classes. I don't want to wait for like, you know, one year." So, if I plan to take my IELTS in one year's time, then maybe, maybe in six, seven months' time or eight, nine months' time, then I'll start preparing. For now, I'll do other things. All right. And they normally think this way because they think that I will forget what I've learned if there's too big of a time gap. So this is what they think, okay? So maybe if,、uh, say, for example, now is March, and you want to take the exam in、uh, December, so maybe they will say, okay, I don't want too much time gap, so I'm going to delay the start of my IELTS to closer to the exam date, so there's a small time gap only. That way, I won't forget anything I've learned. So they say, oh, I'm just going to wait now for my IELTS class to start. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, maybe November. Then I'll start taking the class. Then I'll take the Exam in December, and I will pass. That's what they think, but they fail, okay? Because they have underestimated the difficulty of the IELTS exam. They don't have enough time to prepare. Every student that come to my class will know how difficult it is, okay? And they always, most of them, regret not starting earlier. So students think that it's better to have a smaller time gap between your preparation class and the IELTS exam, so that you forget less of what you learn in class and therefore perform better in the IELTS exam. Okay, that is completely wrong, and one of the reasons why they start too late and one of the reasons why they fail. Right? You need a bigger time gap to study and improve. So basically, if you're at March right now and you want to take the exam in December. Start your IELTS class now, especially if you are taking my online IELTS classes. Start now because there's a lot of work to do to improve. It's not so easy. If you start early, you give as big a time gap as possible between the starting of your IELTS class and the taking of the IELTS exam. Then you have a better chance of passing. Now, the results of starting preparation too late. Number one, you take the IELTS exam many times before passing, and you waste a lot of money. Number two, you can't pass before the deadline and can't immigrate or study overseas. Now, this is a sad、um, thing if it, if this actually happens, but it has happened many times because people underestimate. Like I, you know, I've stated the many reasons they underestimate the difficulty of the IELTS exam. They life just gets in their way. They think that they shouldn't prepare too early. If you can't pass before the deadline, and sometimes for immigration and studying overseas, you will have a deadline, especially for immigration. All right.、Um, Then your whole future is destroyed because you started too late, and then you can't pass because you can't improve enough to get the score that you want before the deadline, and that's quite sad, right?、Um, or they could become discouraged after failures, many failures, taking it and failing many times, and in the end, discouragement, your mental health,、uh, your emotional health, how you feel about failing and failing and failing, that can really discourage you and demotivate you. And it can cause you to end up giving up 
your dreams of immigration or studying overseas. And I've seen that many times when people don't take IELTS seriously, they start too late, they fail, they fail, they fail. And then they say, okay, forget about it. That's too difficult. It's not too difficult if you put in the hard work, if you start early, okay? So the moral of the story is this, start your IELTS preparation as soon as you can. There will never be a more perfect time than now. Life always gets in the way and works to delay your start. To claim your free essay template formula workshop handouts, which include many things, including the level three essay template I went through just now, and also the explanations, detailed explanations of why the words and phrases, etc., are good. If you want all this 80 plus pages of handouts, just WhatsApp me at plus 65 1054 with the words ETF handouts, please, and I'll reply you with the link. All right, I want to talk about this free four hour IELTS masterclass video. Many have asked if I teach other components of the IELTS exam or I only teach writing. Writing is, of course, the most difficult component of IELTS, and the workshop that I just went through with you is, of course, completely focused on IELTS writing. However, I do also teach listening, reading, and speaking. So if you're interested to know how to prepare properly for all four components of the IELTS exam, you can watch this completely free four hour IELTS masterclass video, all right? Not only do I cover listening, reading, writing, and speaking, but also cover important topics like uh, why 60 to 80% of people fail IELTS on their first attempt and over and over again. I get more in depth into this. Also, I get more in depth into the three components of proper IELTS preparation and the amount of time you should spend on each one. I also talk about the two different approaches to IELTS preparation, which is basically smart work versus hard work. Now I talk about smart work strategies, which is of course, smart work is what you want to aim for. I apply it to uh, speaking and writing and I show you actually how you can work smart for speaking and writing. And there are of course, 200 plus pages of handouts and some useful class materials that will be given to you, all right? Now you can access this recorded webinar for free at this webpage, www.ielsuniversity.com forward slash masterclass. Okay, at the moment, this is completely free. Just go to www.ielsuniversity.com forward slash masterclass. All right, so I'm gonna end here. Again, this is my online IELTS classes. If you want to find out more about it, if you wanna register for this class, if this is still during the launch, period the price is 250 Singapore dollars and there will be unlimited fortnightly live Zoom class. If it's not during the launch period, then the price will be the normal price of $400 and I'll probably just give about uh, two or three months worth of live Zoom classes. So if you're interested, just WhatsApp me at plus 65 9768 1054.